The God of Thunder is set to return back into the MCU in this year's Thor Ragnarok alongside Hulk and Loki. In the past, he has shown exceptional brute strength, putting up a decent match against the green monster himself and taking several hits from the man-made AI known as Ultron. And what's most commonly associated with Thor is his iconic hammer, Mjolnir. Contrary to what's widely believed, the hammer doesn't weigh as much as one would think it would. According to Marvel themselves, the hammer weighs in at around 42 pounds. That's pretty impressive seeing that he lugs that thing around like a weightless dumbbell. But just how strong is he so that he could do that? Or how strong is the God of Thunder? So in his fight against Iron Man in 2012's The Avengers, Thor is shown easily capable of crushing Iron Man's sturdy suit with his bare hands. Now, the way the film explains what Tony Stark's armor is made of doesn't really make too much sense when you analyze it deeply. It's been stated that his armor went from an iron-based suit to a gold titanium one, but in a video titled The Science of the Avengers, posted by the Reactions channel, that's reactions as in chemical reactions by the way, not well, you know. Dr. Rachel Burks goes on to explain that it would be impractical for Tony Stark to be using a gold titanium alloy suit because it'd be way too heavy and inconvenient for flying. She claims that in the real world, Stark would most likely use a nickel titanium alloy instead, or nitinol, as it's strong and light. Well, the ultimate tensile strength of that kind of alloy is around 895 megapascals. To put that into perspective, the average human's bones each have an ultimate tensile strength of 150 megapascals. And if we consider all of the other elements that could be in his suit that Dr. Burks theorized, like graphite reinforced with carbon fiber, then Thor could literally crush around five human forearms all at once with one hand. Of course, he wouldn't be able to do that in actuality because, number one, holding five forearms in the palm of your hand would be too tall to crush all at once, and number two, uh, superheroes aren't real. He also managed to lift this car back to the flying city of Sokovia, presumably with one arm too as his other hand was holding onto his hammer. Most cars this size weigh at around 3,000 pounds, so doing that is exceptional especially with one arm. In addition to issuing out force, Thor can take in quite a lot. During the Battle of New York, what's been universally praised as a comedic relief moment serves as a great display of Thor's anatomical strength too. After Thor and Hulk's little team up, we witness Thor get punched off the screen. And remember, we've seen what that one green hand can do. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. With that much force under such a small area, you would almost instantaneously be splattered all over the room. Now of course, Hulk wouldn't use that much force on Thor. I mean it's heavily implied the scene was just a super scaled version of slapping your good friend's butt after a good game of football. Oh wait, you don't do that? Trust me? No, but seriously, look how fast Thor just flies away. Whatever the amount of force Hulk exerted, it looked really painful. And yet Thor just later walks it off like nothing happened to him because the punch was intended to be a quote unquote soft punch. And as stated earlier, he's taken numerous amount of punches from Ultron, who at the time was armored with vibranium, the strongest metal in the MCU, which we know because Tony Stark says, Have you been juicing? A little vibranium cocktail? Might I add, being hit by a strong metal, say like a solid steel bat, wouldn't be very pleasing. And if that isn't godly enough for you, the movies have slightly hinted at him being bulletproof. I mean, there was that one scene in the first Avengers where he hides away from a Gatling gun, but then in Age of Ultron, he just ate like a hundred rounds. Oh yeah, and he also took a big boulder to the face, and survived an exploding city from point blank range. So there you have it, Thor is capable of crushing almost every bone in your body with literally just his bare hands and is virtually immortal. And by immortal I mean that in the sense of being invulnerable to death by pain, not age. Apparently, the Asgardian gods do in fact die, just take 5,000 years. But what about Thor's defining feature? What about his hammer? Well, we see him use it basically all the time in battle, and holding back on his throwing force is essential in ensuring that his enemies aren't instantaneously obliterated. He's thrown it at people and things like Iron Man, Quicksilver, Hydragoon number one, Hydragoon number two, and Ultron. But the fastest that hammer has ever gone was actually when it was far away from him. In Thor The Dark World, Thor throws his hammer at Malekith in another world, but it teleports back to Earth. In this specific scene, we see that the hammer manages to go from about Earth's surface level to the outside of Earth's atmosphere in less than two seconds. About 1.3 seconds to be precise. And according to space.com, the Earth's atmosphere is about 10 miles tall. So covering 10 miles in 1.3 seconds is about 27,692 miles per hour, or 36 times the speed of sound. That's nine times faster than the MCU's version of Quicksilver. I'm not really sure as to why the hammer goes supersonic when it's far from its owner, 
probably some sort of fancy magical homing device or something. But if you were to get in the way of the hammer's path during that particular flight, then you'd just be gone. Like, you just cease to exist. You wouldn't even be dead, bro. You just disappear. No, but seriously, it, it, it wouldn't be good for you. With that speed and size, you'd be dead in seconds. Or maybe even less. Having an American football thrown at your head at 50 miles per hour would definitely hurt. But now try multiplying that speed over 500 times. Now add 40 pounds to the football. If it hits your head directly, you'd be dead almost instantaneously because your newly cracked skull would just squish the inside of your cranium, juicing the blood out of your brain. And as the famous Jake Roper stated in his What If Quicksilver Ran Past You video, pebbles and coins would be thrown around by rapid wind speeds trailing behind something moving past Mach 10, like Quicksilver. Sure, the hammer doesn't have as much mass as Quicksilver, but it's going over three and a half times the speed. The pebbles and coins being thrown around would be so fast that they would have the same kinetic energy as a speeding bullet. So you wouldn't have to be exactly hit by the hammer to get severely injured, just standing nearby would mean a very slim chance of survival. In the end, this interpretation of Thor does fit the bill of being a god in every sense of the way. He has such strength that would enable him to crush human bones with one hand and lift 3,000 pounds with the other. He can take high force pressures from machine guns, and he wields one of the deadliest weapons known in the universe. Fictional universe. One of the deadliest weapons in the fictional universe. Or not. I mean, hey, superheroes could be real. Who am I to judge? Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. It truly means a lot that you all watch my videos. If you genuinely like this video, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, consider following me on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. And for more of my videos, just click right here.